My name is uh, Mitya Klemencic and uh, welcome to the eCourse in Efficiency Project on Multipurpose Use of Charging Infrastructure. So the aim of the today unit is to present uh, the main uh, the main research questions on what are the modalities and functionalities of the energy efficient multipurpose use of public transport infrastructure, what are the relevant technologies and technical solutions which are developed all over the Europe, and uh, what are the innovative technologies that are relevant for multipurpose use of charging infrastructure. And the third research question is to, to explore the benefits and the barriers uh, which are generated by a multipurpose use of public transport infrastructure and their employment deployment. Um, in regard to technologies, there are three general technologies, which is for multimodal use, for multifunctional use, and the new innovative solutions specialized for in-motion charging on road e-vehicles. If we go into details of individual technology, so the technology A for multimodal use of public transport infrastructures focus on uh, charging of different electric vehicle modes from existing public transport grid, um, meaning like metro, tram, rail or even cable car, uh, meaning charging additional e-vehicles like e-buses, like trolley buses with the focus on hybrid trolley buses, or even charging multimodal charging hubs, meaning for charging e-cars, e-buses, e-bikes, or other uh, electric vehicles like e-delivery events or something like that. Um, the multifunctional use is uh, the technology B, uh, meaning for uh, charging from existing public transport lead, like from tram or like from metro or trolleybus or even rail, the, the grid is used for other functions. Uh, so uh, the usage of recuperate breakage is one solution and the other other solution is the usage of smart grid meaning to the usage of concepts of vehicle to grid re renewable energy sources photovoltaic systems and similar and the third technology technology c uh, explores the innovative solutions of in motion charging uh, meaning uh, specialized for innovative uh, in motion charging on roads uh, which are those new innovative solutions uh, which are divided into three solutions for inductive ground charging specialized for e-buses uh, then is the conductive overground charging uh, which are developed on, on highways and there is additional solution for conductive ground charging uh, which is maybe most relevant for multimodal use uh, so, if we go now to present the benefits of individual uh, solutions, uh, first is the presentation of multimodal use of public transport infrastructure for e-buses, which of course is a fast, efficient and cheap uh, solution uh, due to already existing public transport infrastructure. So, the technical benefits are the, to put new charges, for example, for opportunity charging of e-buses, fast charging of e-buses on the same location where already the infrastructure exists. The reliability of uh, the system in the specialized for cases of power interruption is of course higher and there is much more balanced distribution of power uh, due to more consumers. Uh, and the financial benefits are uh, with such system, the lower energy per case price can be achieved, specialized, especially as the, there are joint uh, uh, agreements between uh, metro tram operators and e-bus operators. Uh, the low, life cycle costs are lower than from public grid, especially, especially as there is no direct contract between energy suppliers and bus operators, additional contract and uh, there is no payment of electrical supplier's margins. Uh, additionally, uh, OPEX uh, operation costs are, is lower um, due to the joint contracts with Metro or tram power grid. 
the next uh, benefits presented are for multimodal use of public transport infrastructure for hybrid trolleybuses. Um, this is, of course, one, one of the main benefits of such technology is there is no need for extension of the trolleybus network. Uh, there is no need for, for investment in, in uh, catenary. Uh, such systems charge only driving under the catenary and uh, when driving uh, off catenary, the charging or the contact to catenary is not needed. So they can be easily replaced with the, the diesel bus and treated like electric buses. Um, and, and this is relevant for the uh, for the parts of the city where where uh, city and regional electric bus lines interfere. Uh, of course, electric buses have better better availability, reliability, efficiency, and also lower maintenance costs as as diesel buses. Uh, multimodal hubs, as the next technology presented uh, here, also can be powered from existing public transport grid, meaning the existing power, public transport grid uh, needs, supports, uh, supplies the energy to, to electric vehicles, commercial vehicles, passenger vehicles, even for taxis, e-delivery or even car, e-car sharing, e-bikes also, and this electricity could be cheaper than than uh, regular electricity from public grid, and of course uh, there are some some um, investigation needed to apply this optimally. For example, for optimal location, and of course the business cases are to be studied into details. Of course, also if the if the local uh, or national law allows it. Uh, the next technology on multifunctional use of public transport infrastructure uh, presents the, the re regular integrated recuperated braking, as we can see here on the right picture. So this is the common common uh, concepts, meaning when the uh, vehicle, train or tram brakes, the recuperated braking uh, energy comes over the over the wires. Or other other train or tram, uh, which uses it for for the acceleration. Uh, there are three different uh, solutions which are already already uh, developed. Uh, one is uh, to store uh, the, this uh, recuperated braking energy on the vehicle. This has the benefit that no overhead lines are needed on certain sections, and which is of course more. Uh, urban, environmentally friendly, oriented, uh, specialized for for city center, for example. Uh, the the storage of recuperated braking can be also done at the stations. Uh, this allows um, lower safety uh, constraint constraints. Uh, there is uh, voltage stabilization. There is also a reduction of the peak power demand, and of course less traction substations are needed. Um, and uh, no upgrades of the electrical network needed, of course, if there is a lot of uh, vehicles, a lot of braking uh, on the stations. Uh, and the third uh, solution is the stationary back to grid application, meaning that when trains break, the uh, energy goes directly to the station for other consumers like electricity for, for lightning or, or escalators or lifts. And uh, with this um, technology, there is even uh, less transformation loss losses. Of course, there is no storage and there is no effect on the operation. So the system, system can have a switch off mode and doesn't affect the operation of regular uh, trains or trams in case of maintenance or, or installation. Um, the next technology is multifunctional use of uh, public transport infrastructure with a smart grid. Smart grid, of, of course, is a quite a new term uh, uh, and uh, specialized in different uh, usage of renewable energy sources integrated with the public transport infrastructure grid. For example, uh, photovoltaics or, or wind energy can be implemented. 
uh, and or also the concepts of vehicle to grid, uh, which has several benefits. Benefits are listed here. So the, the main benefit is, of course, to reduce the total cost of ownership of fleets, batteries and even photovoltaic due to this connected, connected system. Uh, so the manufacturers are able to sell vehicles with added value so the cars can even make some money if we simplified it. Uh, the energy market parties can trade and optimize their balance. This is also a benefit and of also benefit for network operators which can optimize investments and stabilize the grid. <clears throat> now we go to the uh, technology C, which are the innovative solutions. Uh, this is a wireless inductive ground in motion charging developed by several manufacturers all over the, the world and also Europe, which can be used for, for stationary or in motion uh, charging of buses which is of course most convenient and in future can be automated uh, so that no, no uh, human uh, is needed for charging. Uh, and um, in the long run, uh, this system allows uh, smaller battery, batteries due to boosted charging either on the, on the stations or in motion. Uh, so the technology works is itself uh, that the electricity passes through the wire coils uh, which produces, generates a magnetic field and uh, the voltage across coils charges then the vehicle batteries. Uh, the next technology developed uh, is uh, by some manufacturers is, uh, can be pronounced as old. Uh, stated as old as it's um, developed in, in uh, metros, in trams, in railways. So the technology with overhead in motion charging with so-called catenary systems. Uh, but this is developed specialized for road vehicles on the, on the highways. So it's also called the A-highway systems. And uh, what is uh, different uh, than due to the, um, let's say, er, let's say rail-based um, catenary systems that uh, we need here two separate conductors for the return path of the current. So uh, this is um, relevant also for, for buses as they have similar power take off interfaces uh, and for heavy, heavy good vehicles on the highways. Uh, the system can have additional um, batteries on board which allows traveling also on roads without catenary, so the pantograph uh, stays down and the system uh, filled batteries can uh, drive over 100, 200 or even 400 kilometers without the catenary system. Uh, and the third technology uh, has, is the in innovative conductive ground in motion charging uh, which is, uh, has two ma major benefits. This is the possibility for vehicles uh, in a wide range of sizes to utilize the infrastructure, meaning it has the, this multimodal uh, usage um, uh, concept and uh, it's, it is avoiding the installation uh, of visual impact of uh, overhead lines. So the, the charging is in, in ground and it is visually much more, much more nicer to have such uh, charging. Um, what are the barriers? The barriers um, of multimodal use are, are, of course, from technical point of view, that there is a lack of technical standards, special, especially for opportunity fast charging of e-buses, which means that there is a quite uh, a challenge to find the compatibility between different manufacturers of, of uh, uh, charging uh, concepts uh, for fast charger and for, for the buses. Um, then uh, there is a possibility that some changes are needed in the current uh, timetable due to the charging of e-buses. No? And uh, there is a possibility that uh, the, in some, some peak uh, time, uh, load on the grid can be can be done, especially if there are additional consumers uh, uh, su 
supplying from the same uh, substation. Uh, and the legal barriers, of course, there is a legal barrier how to sell the energy to, to third party or to private, private uh, cars. And uh, if we want to, for example, extend the catenary lines, uh, there is quite a uh, not so simple uh, process of use of environmental benefits for the uh, planning and for the investment uh, documentation and business cases. Uh, the barriers from multifunctional point uh, of uh, use uh, of public transport infrastructure are there from the technical view uh, that there are quite high safety constraints for mobile storage applications um, and uh, there are some overhead line losses um, due to big distances between vehicles and between stations um, and also for some solutions like back to grid systems there is no voltage stabilization on the legal legal point of view uh, there is an, a good um, barrier known uh, that um, if we have stricter rules, stricter enforcement, uh, this is maybe not so good because uh, it may result in higher costs or even uh, uh, the decision makers abandon the project. And there are also, on the other hand, no, no uh, standards uh, for bidirectional power transfer uh, between different modes, for example, between public transport and, uh, and cars. Uh, and the barriers for the innovative in motion chargings, um, the, the testing procedure already showed that especially for the ground systems, for the um, uh, wireless systems, there is quite a poor efficiency of the energy transfer in actual conditions. So for example, snow or, or other weather conditions do not very good affect the, the operating of the system. Uh, in wireless charging, uh, additional charger is needed to be integrated into the vehicle, which of course produces additional costs. And of course, the installation and the operation of the power distribution system of such such uh, system, innovative, is, is a big investment and therefore uh, not uh, not so uh, cheap. Um, there are, although there are quite new innovative system, they are not multimodal. Uh, so there is no clear vision on on multimodality, uh, especially where, as there are no some systems which are not interoperable within which with each other. Uh, in regard to legal barriers, uh, there is a lack of standardization of such uh, systems on the infrastructure and on the vehicle side. And also there is a lack of interoperability between different concepts and different manufacturers. And uh, this is it from my side. Thank you very much for your attention.